judgments differ as to how much Kanye West's internet roiling tweets of last week, praising President Trump were the product of manic thinking. No subtlety of judgment is needed, however, to recognize that his words reverberated with such incredible reach and velocity because of how well they conveyed what the internet itself is doing to the culture of political speech. For those with a digital media-free diet, I was, not long ago the darling of Democrats who welcomed his interest in a 2020 presidential campaign, shocked leftward-leaning fans and critics with a string of remarks on Twitter. Pitting love against fear, West indicated an unwillingness to join in the spirit of condemnation directed by so much of his audience toward Trump in political reactionaries and conservatives. The resultant feeling of betrayal, of poison on the right of the political spectrum leaching into still more of popular culture and claiming another soul for the darkness, launched a frenzy of online commentary, which as of late last week had yet to subside. Although the ordeal is unprecedented in some ways, at the superficial level, it does not leave much to the imagination, and does not hold any surprises for longtime analysts or watchers playing along at home. Yet West's ruminations hold more significance than X amount of ground won or lost in today's round-the-clock war of words. True, arguing at that level is inevitable and to some degree necessary. Also true is that we'll only see beyond it if at least some of us hike up a bit for a more sweeping view. What we see from the heights is how West shows the internet is melting ideological politics. It's not just a case of the entrenched ideological interests doing an about-face, as also happened in places on the right, to suit the demands of the moment in turbulent times. The core idea West unpacked in his tweet storms is that political ideology is not a worthwhile ordering principle for human hearts and minds. Naturally, when ideologues hear this, they respond negatively. Not only are they being told in so many words that they are squandering their life force on something beneath the standard set by our human potential. They're also being opened up to an existential threat to their identity as political ideologues, which typically hinges on the notion that they're ideologues because that is what humans ought to or must be. Usually, that idea arises from the notion that justice is the ultimate measure of human life and politics is the means to which justice is the end. And so, clearly, we're reminded that the core concept West expressed is at odds not just with political ideologues in the doctrinaire partisan sense but with people whose philosophical ideology holds that politics is the highest and most important activity for humans to put their life force into. West challenges both concepts. And in both cases West is all but certain to be taken, at his word, prescriptively. Climbing up to the relative heights of the situation, however, it seems likely that the immense reaction West elicited is a result of a deeper fear or awareness that his claims are fundamentally descriptive. Unlike in ages past, when the case for putting politics or ideology first was clear, compelling, and, to the millions upon millions collected by press and electric communication into mass audiences, utterly convincing, we now live in a digital age where the ground of reality has moved beneath us, and moved us into a different reality where that case no longer coheres or computes. There is an exceptional futility involved in trying to prosecute a political ideology online. As West instantly showed, the effort is increasingly purely reactionary in the sense of rushing in a servile way from one position to the next, depending on utterances and events that arise from digital life yet impact online political speech as if they were invasions from another universe. What's more, even when battle lines are relatively stable, the practice of ideology suffers from the evanescent and increasingly automated or mechanical character of political speech online. Rhetoric, classically understood as the art of grammar devoted to persuasion, has been all but destroyed. Convincing people and changing minds is prohibitively difficult, and those who try are effectively punished by the operating system of online speech. Rewards flow to those who perform political speech in a manner most consistent with how an excellent AI program to share their ideology would do it. And finally, political speech online is increasingly fruitless in the sense of not impacting political reality and political players. There is a way in which Trump, to take one example, seems to be deeply affected by political speech online and on television. Yet it must not be as true as it seems, because the tenor of Trump's online critics, and again, this is just one example, is defined by ever deeper fury at how little their speech makes a difference to what happens in the real political world. Or, to ram the point home further, to what happens online itself. The internet, West appears to confirm, is stacking itself more and more against the endless ideological war of words. That word, he appears to confirm, is less and less generative, less and less artful, and less and less consequential. It is, in a phrase, decreasingly human. James Poulos is an editorial writer and columnist for the Southern California News Group.